This video introduces non-parametric statistics and chi-square and corresponds with chapter 17 in your textbook. So non-parametric tests are a new class of tests that we are talking about now. And they don't have the same set of assumptions that we have with parametric tests, which is what we've been talking about essentially um, for the entire semester once we started talking about inferential tests. Um, of mean differences and tests of association. So non-parametric tests are a set of hypothesis tests. You'll see hypothesis testing that uses the same six steps that we've been talking about along, all along, but we don't have the same assumptions. And we'll talk a little bit about the limitations and um, the advantages of using non-parametric tests as well. So before we move forward, let's remember what our assumptions are for the parametric tests. The first is we can assume that the distribution of scores in the population, the underlying distribution for a sample, is normal. Now we don't need to assume this anymore for a non-parametric test. We do have an assumption that there's random selection and that for the most part our dependent variables are scale. So if we ask ourselves, is the dependent variable scale, and we say yes, then we can also ask ourselves in terms of determining what test would fit is the independent variable scale. If we say yes, we find ourselves with correlation and regression. Remember, because we have these two continuous scale variables that we're trying to associate with each other. If we say, well, the independent variable is not scale, then we have what are called tests of mean differences, which we've been working on for the most of the semester. And those include the one sample Z and T test, the paired and independent sample T test, and analysis of variance. And remember that the differences here um, is that we've got a known population standard deviation for the Z test, but not for the T. And then here, the difference between these two is the research design, a paired sample T test being within subjects, and an independent sample t-test being between subjects. And if we have three means or more, then we have analysis of variance, and there's various forms of that as well. So if we say no to this first question, is the dependent variable scale? Well, that leads us in the direction that we're heading in now. And so what we can ask ourselves is, are all of the variables that we're working with nominal variables? So you might want to spend some time um, thinking about, before we go on, what are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio variables? You might want to pause and take a moment to think about that or look up in your notes what they are. Okay, so we have, if we have at only one variable and it's nominal, or we have two variables that are nominal, or all our variables are nominal, essentially, then if we answer yes, then we use what's called the chi-square. And it is a test that allows us to look at whether or not our proportion of scores for each category um, matches whatever we would expect to see in the population. And we have two different kinds of chi-square. We have goodness of fit, and we have independence. Um, goodness of fit basically says, OK, this is what we see in the population. How well do our sample data fit what we see in the population, or some known values that we're interested in? And we actually don't want it to fit very well in order to reject the null hypothesis. Um, the null hypothesis would say, oh, the model's just like uh, or our sample is just like what we see in the population. In independence, we want to know, does uh, the proportion of scores that we find in one category differ um, when we look at um, another category? So are there more male CEOs of businesses than female CEOs of businesses? And then we could look at, say, two time periods. It, has that changed? So that might be. Um, another way that we could look at that. And that brings me to kind of this last section. If we say no, are all the vari variables nominal? Then we ask ourselves, are any of these variables ordinal? Um, 
And so depending upon our answer here, we say yes, oh look, we have this Spearman rank order correlation, the Wilcox and Sign rank test, they're all different things. And they actually map on to a lot of these tests up here. Um, and this is the kind of stuff that if you're taking the second semester of statistics and research methods as a psychology major, we'll get into some of these things. And so just to give you a little preview, um, the Spearman is a non, uh, the non-parametric version of the Pearson's correlation coefficient. The Wilcox and Sign rank is a non-parametric version of the paired t-test. The Man Whitney U is a non-parametric version of the independent samples t, and the Kruska Walls H is a non-parametric version of the analysis of variance. So we've learned a lot of tests, and there's still more out there. But I want you to know that if we can't meet the assumptions up here, we actually have tests down here that we could use. Um, and they're in chapter 18 of your textbook. The only one we're really going to spend time talking about is this goodness of fit for chi-square. OK, so when do we use the nonparametric tests? Well, first, we can use them when the dependent variable is nominal. Um, all up until this point, our our dependent variable has been the scale. If the dependent variable or the independent variable is ordinal, we can use a nonparametric test. Um, sometimes we use them when the sample size is small because we really don't know what the distribution of scores is like in the population, or we know for certain that the population is not normal. But you might be asking yourself, well, if we don't have to make as many assumptions in nonparametric tests, why don't we just use them all the time? Well, there's several limitations. One is that we can't really very easily use confidence intervals or effect sizes, so we just don't have as much information. Our nonparametric tests also are less powerful, so it's harder to detect differences when they actually do exist. Uh, nominal and ordinal data really don't give us as much information. Remember all the way back to Chapter 1 when you talk about something like Okay, well, we can say um, it's very hot in Phoenix, and it's hot in Houston, and it's kind of hot in South Bend, right? It doesn't really tell us what we mean by very hot, hot, and kind of hot. Um, Ordinal could tell you, you know, Phoenix is the hottest, and then comes Houston, and then comes South Bend. Um, but if we actually had temperatures, I think that would probably be a lot more useful than either nominal or ordinal data. It gives us more pre precise information. The last part is that we actually have an increased type 2 error rate. So that means that we're less likely to reject the null hypothesis when we should. So those are the drawbacks, is that we just don't have as powerful of a test and we're likely to commit more type 2 errors. In the next video, I will discuss hypothesis testing with the chi-square test for goodness of fit. And you'll notice that the same six steps of hypothesis testing are used. And it's essentially just like a one sample T or a one sample Z in the sense that we have a single set of sample values or a single variable that we compare then to some known parameters, so known population values. So that, that'll be on the next video.